Hey, how you doing? This is Kevin from Winksound.com. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the sample display functions. Um, you can warp your samples, you can loop your samples, uh, pitch them up and down. So uh, there's some really cool stuff you can do with your looping and your clips. So uh, check it out. Okay, so when you load in a sample into Ableton, uh, you have your sample editor down here using this button and uh, you have a lot of different options on how you want to tweak that sample and make it sound uh, in time and in key in the way you want to sound it. So uh, I have a drum sample and a couple music like a guitar and a horn sample here. So with the drum sample um, I've selected warp which will automatically make the uh, sample be in time with the song. I've selected a 83 BPM tempo here and uh, without warp we'll see what the original sample drum sample sounds like okay but that's not in time with the song so as you can hear but when I press warp it'll automatically go into 83 BPM So uh, that's pretty useful. Uh, always with drums, use the beats um, setting over here um, because that will chop it up using transients rather than uh, tonal qualities. And uh, you have some options as far as those transients go, uh, how finely tuned you want that to warp it. Um, also, you can go into double time or cut time here. So I'll show you. Let's go twice as fast. or twice as slow. So that's pretty cool. Um, over here we uh, have our guitar sample. Let's listen to that. Okay, so that's warped as well. Uh, but this is using tones. Uh, so anything with a clear pitch structure, you want to use tones. So anything musical. And you have some options as far as how finely tuned as well you want, but this does it by grains instead of transients. Um, also you have some uh, options over here. As you can see, I transpose this to minus six, which means it's uh, detuned six half steps down. Um, let's hear it the original way. But as you can see, that doesn't go along with uh, the, the rest of the song here. That just doesn't sound right. So if we bring it down to minus six. Those sort of sound like they're both in the same key. Uh, this will be a little more finely tuned down here. Um, you have some options as far as uh, your decibel, your amplitude level here. So you can change the decibel level of the sample. As you can see, the waveform gets bigger and smaller. Um, up here is a really cool little button. Uh, this is the reverse button. So you'll see that. I just press that again to make it go back to normal. Uh, edit will bring up any other program you want that uh, you want to edit the sample with. Um, replace will bring up your your library and uh, you can check out some other samples in there as well. Uh, save will save any changes you've made to this particular sample and it'll keep it the way it is. Uh, the high cue button uh, will basically make Ableton use a more sophisticated algorithm to uh, sample at a at a higher rate um which which will give it a higher quality sample and it'll sound better but um that's at the risk of using more computer power so be careful with that the fade button is pretty cool because it'll prevent clipping uh, at the beginning and the end of the samples um which which doesn't sound good so 
it's really you can't you can barely even hear it it's like 0.4 milliseconds so you should usually have that on to prevent clipping and ram will uh save computer power by sampling it within the song rather than sampling it uh, from its original place on your computer um also the loop button will obviously in enable your loop brace uh and without that it'll just play it once as you can see here and then stop uh, these are your numeric values for your start and end braces and these are your numeric values for your loop brace you can always get in touch with Kevin at wingsound.com as well as watch more of Kevin's videos including these titles featuring Ableton Live now available on demand at wingsound.com